Hi, everyone. Sorry, we were just having a little technical uh, issues getting set up there, but uh, welcome to uh, Louisa's session, Post-Pandemic Recruitment Strategies. We're really happy to have you here. Uh, Louisa, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, and I am honored to have everyone join me today to discuss post-pandemic recruitment strategies. So, you know, initially I thought, is this post-pandemic? Are we still in pandemic? Um, I would say we're still a little bit of both. <laughs> so as we get started today, um, I'd like to share a little bit about what we'll be talking about. Of course, I'll introduce myself a little bit more and tell you a little bit about LD Human Resources and what we do. Then we'll talk about what's going on in today's market and, and how can we attract top talent given what's going on in the market. Um, and, you know, the world of work has changed to a hybrid workplace. So um, what does that mean and what candidates have uh, in terms of expectations uh, in the new world of work? The other piece I'm going to leave you with is really some tips for success when you're going right into that market. Um, and I, I'll leave off with connections and networking so that you can reach out to me anytime if you want to continue the conversation. Well, so as really, I mentioned, oh, sorry, sorry, I just want to say we're really, really looking forward to it. And I really appreciate you being here. Um, as you said, things are just so up in the air in terms of, you know, is, is it post pandemic? Are we <laughs> are we entering into that uh, into that phase? And uh, hopefully we are. And a lot of things are changing. The, the job numbers are, are very positive and, and people are definitely going back to work and the government's giving a lot of support. Um, and so things are just changing so rapidly. So I'm really looking forward to hearing your, your presentation. And again, want to thank you for being here. And I'll be back towards the end just to wrap up. Wrap up. So I'll leave you to it. Awesome. Thank you so right. much. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. So as I mentioned, my name is Louisa DeJesus and I am the founder and president of LD Human Resources. Uh, at LD Human Resources, we really partner with, um, I would say, small to medium to potentially, you know, larger organizations as well as I kind of look at sort of the client base that we've developed and had such an honor to work with. Um, but essentially, we work with all sizes of organizations in a variety of different industries, anything related to HR. So a lot of the times we'll work with organizations that perhaps don't have HR or uh, need some interim support with certain projects or just in general, we are that HR department. We want to set a foundation to ensure that um, you know, you're being compliant, but more importantly, you're reaching those organizational objectives through your people. So we really help with that solid foundation. And it depends on what the organization wants to achieve and how we set out the, the strategy. So our solutions are very customized. We provide both uh, in-person and remote, uh, of course, with COVID protocols, um, ensuring compliance, but really tailoring those programs so that you're, you're meeting those objectives and, and, and hitting the bottom line through your people. At the end of the day, we really can't achieve great things without a team. Um, and so it's really important to recognize that as a, as a leader in, in the business. So we specialize in different areas, HR strategy, compliance, you know, talent and performance management, offboarding, onboarding, workplace investigations, you name it, anything to do with HR, we, we would support it. So what are things uh, looking like in today's market? What is the candidate pool looking like? What is the job market look like? Well, I'll be honest with you, there's still definitely a talent pool sort of shortage. I would say across the organizations in very um, various industries. So, you know, we look at sort of, you know, those industries that have been really hit hard with, um, with you know, COVID. We'll, we'll look at, for example, the hospitality industry. So, you know, we've had a number of individuals that were in that industry that have decided to pivot and perhaps they've changed to careers. So you maybe have got a shortage in terms of who's in that industry. The other piece uh, that we have to recognize is that there, um, there are still government uh, programs in place that depending on the level and the salary, uh, of the role, uh, perhaps those individuals have decided to take advantage of those supports, uh, service still in play till January. But you know, you know, now you start to see people getting into uh, more interest of, of getting back into the workplace. But the reality is there's still very much the pandemic. There's concerns with individuals' health considerations as well as, um, you know, vaccine policies, or just in general resources that have changed and shifted 
perhaps in the family dynamic. Maybe they, they don't have child care supports or elder care supports as much as they used to have. So really considering those pieces um, when they're looking to go into the candidate pool to, to look for a new job. Other industries such as marketing, finance, right? The world of work has gone online. So there's definitely a, a huge uh, shortage or, you know, a shift in terms of the need of those skill sets um, in, the, in the world of work. Uh, so definitely there is some challenges with recruiting in that space. Construction, construction has always been um, a challenge with skilled trades. Many individuals have you know, um, as of, I would say the last, you know, 20 years or so, there's been a focus of going into academic roles, uh, you know, university education versus the skilled trades or uh, college education. Um, whereas, you know, the, the focus of those individuals have been, you know, definitely not in the trades where there's a shortage in the construction. Um, and, and it's been a booming business that hasn't stopped. I mean, the cost of lumber, I think, has tripled, right? So think about, you know, what does that translate into um, from a construction uh, process that they're able to not really achieve those project deadlines, perhaps with the shortage of work. So definitely there's a, a shortage and those considerations when it comes to COVID, you know, of, of people's health and safety or government supports as well as resources is definitely something that we're looking at with today's market. So what do we do to attract this top talent, right? What can we put in place? What can we consider in terms of a strategy so that we can attract top talent? Well, essentially, you know, it's going to depend on the industry. It'll depend on the level of role it is and, you know, uh, where you want to target in terms of that demographic. So, you know, things as alumni programs, perhaps, uh, at certain, uh, you know, job board associations, or, you know, maybe you want to post a position on Facebook or Kijiji, depending on sort of who the target market is that you're looking at. So you want to consider, okay, what is the level of role? Is it someone that I can find sort of a junior level, senior level, or, you know, perhaps you need to call um, someone who's specialized as a headhunter to, to poach or to find that really a uh, needle in a haystack of that candidate that you really need to fill that talent pool. The other thing I want to, you know, just put out there is that a lot of the times you're never going to find that perfect candidate. So thinking of a plan B and plan C in terms of how you could perhaps put stretch goals in place for individuals, who's going to train someone if we can't get that experience level, what can we do so that you can quickly shift if you needed to in terms of that strategy with recruiting. So I talked a little bit about social platforms, social media platforms. You know, you want to use those to your advantage. Uh, the world is online completely now. You know, we've got those who have not been familiar with technology, uh, you know, are very tech savvy in terms of the social media space, uh, even as a pastime. So we want to make sure that, you know, you're, you've got a, a solid website. You, you're representing your brand and your organization effectively so that the candidates are, you know, when they're doing their homework or researching what kind of company you are, they're finding you online. You know, the reviews online are saying that you're a great employer. So you want to make sure that you've got that social media presence and just in general online presence. I've heard of uh, certain organizations also providing incentives just to come in for an interview, because as I mentioned, depending on the level of, of you know, the, the salary or the, the compensation component, you know, there's, there's not really uh, the pool to, to fill those roles. So making sure that you've had a little added value, you know, I've heard gift cards for, for interviews, as I mentioned. Um, the other thing, you know, you want to ensure that you're doing is sharing with your with your existing team, right? Do you have a referral bonus uh, program? Are they advocating for how great your organization is and why they work there and sharing that they want their, you know, their friends, their past colleagues to come and work for your organization as well. So having incentives in your organization is also very important so that you're, you know, you're, you're getting that ad advocacy internally uh, to that external market. Um, the other thing is you want to ensure that we are addressing, you know, how are you ensuring that the candidate is safe? Are your interviews online? Is there an in-person component required for the interview process? Who will they be meeting with? Um, you know, and what, what are your, you know, if you have vaccination policies, 
what are they so that you know whether the candidate is uh, vaccinated or not vaccinated they're prepared so that they can come and participate within you know, within the realm of your process and how you've set out to achieve. Are you, you know, making sure they're safe by, by, uh, as, you know, physical distancing, uh, by mask wearing, uh, those types of things. You want to be very transparent with, you know, how the organization is supporting COVID protocols. And then in terms of, you know, as I mentioned to you, your organization's value proposition, essentially, what is it that you're doing um, as an organization and how have you demonstrated that, uh, why people want to come and work for you? If there's one thing I must say is that a, a number of individuals through this pandemic have what some of us call COVID clarity. So, uh, you know, that means they really have decided to align themselves with the vision, the mission, the purpose of that organization. They just don't want to sort of go to work for a paycheck. They want to have more of a purpose in, in what they're doing at work um, and, and clear in terms of who they're partnering with in terms of what they want to achieve, you know, in their journey here of life, if you will. So you want to make sure that you, you've you been clear in terms of are you involved in the community? What is your vision? What is your mission? What is it that your, you know, your value proposition is as an organization and, 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 and promoting that, right? So those are some sort of considerations when we're looking at attracting top talent. Now we're going to go into our, you know, our reality of our new world of work. Uh, there are still a number of individuals that are working completely from home. It's complete remote. There are others that have uh, environments where, you know, that's essential or, you know, there's a physical component to their role where they're specifically in the field. We have others that have a mix of both where, you know, the expectation is perhaps that they've started to kind of go back into the environment uh, at the office on a, in a hybrid schedule, we say in a part-time schedule. And, and so you want to ensure that you're being clear in terms of what does that look like? And, you know, there's been a shift in mindset, right? People are now comfortable and perhaps have a more productive lifestyle and focus in their work by having this uh, flexibility and hybrid work environment model. So, you know, when you're saying the role is absolutely required in the office and they can essentially do some of that work from home, they're going to ask why and why is it that I need to be here? And, you know, is it something that I can have some flexibility? Because perhaps they're going to go to the other you know, your competitor or another workplace that's going to offer that flexibility that fits their work-life balance, right? Um, so you want to make sure that um, you're considering those pieces as to why there is that in-office component. Is there an opportunity to have the hybrid work environment? I mean, I, I think what's been uh, some of the, I guess, concerns really is, you know, you, you hear about people going into work and, you know, they're being mandated to go back into the workplace, but then they're getting to the office and they're literally sitting at a desk without anybody around them. There's really no collaboration or no difference for them sitting in their office at home. So, um, you know, the, the old sort of perspective of oversight, if I can't see them, they're not working. We really need to work to, towards work product and pro performance management to ensure that there's that balance and effective use of your of your staff. So I, I would say those are things that you know candidates are definitely considering as to you know do I have that flexibility? Can I continue to operate at my uh, top productivity with having that flexibility and that balance? The other thing is people look at, you know, what benefits uh, is it that you offer? And I would say benefits not necessarily from a, you know, competitive salary only or, you know, medical dental uh, offerings, but, you know, from a total rewards package, do you have, you know, wellness programs in place? Are you um, supporting the mental health of your team members? Do you have resources available for them? Um, what are you doing from a training and leadership development perspective? You know, people want to progress. And so it's really that total rewards. And, you know, do, do you have coverage and employee assistance program for these uh, sort of additional pieces outside of the competitive uh, base salary piece? When we talk about 
COVID safety assurances. I think there's a lot of divide in today's society. It's a very controversial topic, but it's something that's very real. So we need to be realistic and address it, be transparent, right? Um, do you have a vaccination policy in place? If not, and you, know, you have a, a different perspective on it, well, you know, be transparent, explain why. Perhaps you don't have something now, but maybe legislation will change and you will be implementing a, a vaccine policy. Or perhaps on the flip side, you have a vaccine policy in place. Um, perhaps that might change and shift as we hear things are going to be changing in legislation. But it's so important to be clear because, you know, individuals sometimes may feel uncomfortable or or more comfortable with individuals that they're going to be working and interacting with, with with a vaccine, or you know, opposite that they that they don't have a vaccine, and and the others don't feel comfortable with that sort of mixed environment. So it's important to to share what you're doing for the overall health and safety of your organization, of your team members, and be clear on what those policies are and and if they could change what what that looked like. You know, I had some individuals reach out to me that, you know, they weren't comfortable with their current employer's vaccine policies, that they, you know, were starting to look for work. Hey, Louisa, do you, do you know of any organizations that, you know, employ my type of skill set that don't have vaccination policies? I always say that, you know, at the end of the day, they, those things could change. So uh, ensuring that we're being transparent as an employer as to what those pieces are, what they could be, is going to be really, really important. The other piece too is, um, you know, how are you onboarding that new talent? Do you have the resources and the capacity as a leader, as a team, to really set them up for success? So oftentimes we're, you know, we're hiring for resources. We're we're short in terms of talent to be able to get our objectives completed, but everyone's really busy working, and there's some burnout that's inevitably taking place because this interim. Uh, stretch is is taking place while we're looking to hire someone. So, you know, in order for that person to be set up with success, we do need to make sure that we've got the time, that we're preparing for that talent, that we've, you know, ordered all of their resources. We've essentially set them up with maybe a buddy, anything that's going to be very intentional, especially if that individual is working remote, to integrate them as effectively as possible so that they can get up to speed in and really work with your team on reaching those organizational objectives. So oftentimes we almost forget about the, you know, the, the they almost sometimes seem like they're, they're routine tasks, but they're definitely tasks that are time consuming that we have to make time and book time for so that we can set that talent up for success so they can hit the ground running. So those are some considerations. And, you know, at the end of the day, the individual is going to be interested to understand, okay, what does your training plan look like? How is it that I'll learn your systems, your expectations? You know, how can I meet those objectives within the first 30, 60, 90 days. Um, so we need to be preparing and be clear and have set objectives to be able to achieve everyone's objectives in that sense. Lastly, I'd like to share a little bit about some of those uh, key tips for success as we get into uh, the world of uh, recruiting and, and how do we successfully, you know, really, what can we use and do right now? Well, I think it's important that if you're recruiting that you, again, similar to onboarding, you've got the time. It's very time intensive. Um, you know, often we'll see uh, that someone will post a position, but they haven't gone back to look at those resumes until a week later. Well, in today's day, those candidates, you know, maybe 50% of them have already found other jobs or they're really, they're looking for work, not just with your organization. So um, it's important to have that candidate engagement, make sure that you're reviewing those resumes within the first few days of posting and you're building on that momentum of interacting with the candidates, sourcing, you know, those, that, those key resumes, that talent that you're interested in and uh, setting up those phone screens or you know, making those calls right away so that you can start the process immediately. So if you don't have the time, you may wanna defer the posting because uh, you will lose out on sort of the opportunity to hire those individuals. And then, you know, it's also, um, it, it sends a message. If you haven't found someone, you have to repost, you know, 
individuals who see the posting more than once may say, well, why haven't they found anyone yet? What's taking so long? Why doesn't anyone want to work there? But meanwhile, it's because you just don't haven't had the time to really dedicate to the recruitment process. So important to have the time and have that candidate engagement and get started right away. The other thing is, you know, here's some really key important interview do's and don'ts. Um, do, make sure you have a plan. Make sure you're prepared, that you've reviewed the resume in advance, that you've you know, asked relevant questions. So in that sense, you want to make sure that you're maintaining compliance with records and that you've got the same set of questions for everyone. You've given thought to what other assessments perhaps that you may want to use. Is there a technical component that we can have them do some practical review? Who else in the organization? What are the steps involved that we're going to share sort of the timeline with the candidates? So we want to be uh, thoughtful and have as much preparation in advance so that we're, uh, we're, we're moving that forward and setting the right tone and um, making sure that you're demonstrating a great organization that this individual wants to work for. Don't, I would say, there's a few of them. You know, you, you, you want to make sure you're giving that candidate your utmost attention. So you know, don't be distracted, especially on the screen, uh, if it's a Zoom interview. Don't be distracted with your emails or a phone call. Um, you know, everything that we are really evaluating candidates, essentially they're evaluating us as well. So you want to make sure that, you know, you're dressing to impress, that you're, you know, that you're representing your organization as effectively as possible. You're not discriminating with any sort of those protective grounds under human rights and asking certain questions um, that could be perceived as that. And, and, you know, the other thing too is, in interviewing, you want to hear as much. So don't dominate that airtime. Ask questions, let the candidate respond, ask probing questions without giving them answers. Um, because you want to make sure that you're being professional. Try not to react, right? Have that poker face. Sometimes you hear things that are out of left field or that are not quite what you wanted, that you thought you were to hear. It's important to try to maintain a really... Um, uh, even keen, I would say, through that whole process as well. Making sure that, you know, from a body language and tone perspective, you, you know, you're smiling, you're welcoming in your body language, that you're not sort of, uh, you know, looking like you uh, are, 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 you know, you just got cut off in an accident that morning. <laughs> so we want to always be positive in our demeanor and our, our body language, our facial expressions, our tone as well. Um, so that we're not we're not judgmental. You know, 65% of communication is nonverbal. So, you know, when a Zoom interview happens or it's remote, we're losing a lot of that. So you want to even accentuate the positive body language and tone as much as you can. And then I see the timeliness it kind of goes back to that candidate engagement at the onset. You know, sometimes you get a wrench in your process. It's taking longer because there's an important business or client demand that's come up or perhaps someone fell ill and you're, you're covering. And as we mentioned, we're already short talent. So, you know, the resources are, are probably already spread thin. You want to be as effective as possible. If there are delays, let the candidates know. I'm sorry, there's a delay. You don't want to have the delay too long because then you're just going to lose the candidate. There's a lot of effort and training and lost uh, opportunity costs, burnout on the flip side that is involved in recruitment costs that are unseen costs. So we're making sure we're timely, we're following up. And you know, the worst thing you can do is not get back to a candidate if you've decided to move with another one. You want to leave that lasting impression that although they weren't the right fit in this moment, you've left them with a positive um, a positive taste, a positive end result, because, you know, although they may not be a, a future um, employee of yours, well, perhaps they're a customer or an advocate to someone else that could fit in your organization, um, you know, whether at the consumer or the employee level um, or, you know, a client level at that sense as well. So really important to, you know, have that positive sort of and uh, with the candidate process, uh, even if it took a little longer, making sure that you're, you're closing that off as effectively as possible. So, you know, in terms of connecting and networking, I would say that your networks are so important. Your networks 
are, uh, you know, important to reach out. So um, I have my contact information here. I welcome you all to reach out, to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, we do work with a variety of different industries, as I mentioned. So if you need support on recruiting, uh, even some tips, um, please feel free to reach out. If you're looking for work, we may have some connections that we can introduce you to, always looking to network and, and connect. I'm going to stop sharing. And yeah, I, I, I think that's about it for me today. If there's any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer and here to help you. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much. Um, I think, oh, thank you so much, Frank. I appreciate it. Again, if you, you do have any questions, you know where to contact us. I'm, you know, all over LinkedIn and I'm sure that our contact information is shared through uh, the session. So uh, please feel welcome anytime. Thank you so much, Lisa. That was amazing. Um, one thing I do suggest, if you could put your contact information maybe just in the chat um, yeah. so people can directly click on your website or uh, if they want to email you, it just makes it a little easier. Or your like, sometimes speakers include their LinkedIn profiles. Um, but thanks so much for all the comments, everyone. That was uh, very well presented and uh, really, really appreciate your time, Louisa. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and good luck out there as you're looking for people. <laughs> and if anyone has any questions, they can contact you directly. I'm assuming by email is probably the preferred yeah, method. Yeah, please do. Thanks. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. Have a great afternoon. You too. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you.